Today in the news, we got a whole bunch of CES. So here are the things that I found most interesting. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. First, let's talk about Intel. During their show, the main attraction, in my opinion, was the demo of their XE-based DG1 GPU. Now, while we definitely knew that the DG1 was a discrete GPU, I legit did not expect it to be a mobile one. There was almost no information revealed on the DG1 except for a small demo of a thin and light laptop running Destiny 2. And as you can see, I mean, you can take a look at the video, it doesn't look like the frame rate is that great. Also, damn, they kept talking over each other. It got really annoying. Absolutely, well, absolutely. So thank you for, thank you. DG1. We're super excited. Working. Thank A lot you more so to much. come this year. All right, everybody, give her thank a hand. So I appreciate much. it. Also with Intel, and I'm sorry if it feels like I'm beating down on them, they're doing it to themselves. It's not necessarily my fault. Anyways, after having donated their Thunderbolt 3 standard to the USB standards committee, Intel just announced Thunderbolt 4. On stage, the company talked about four times the throughput of USB 3, but you guys know how bad the USB naming scheme is. After further digging, Tom's Hardware found out that this is essentially a rebrand of Thunderbolt 3, at least until Intel gives us more information on the uh, actual enhancements made to Thunderbolt 4. Moving on to AMD, there were a lot of releases. The RX 5600 XT has finally been revealed completely, and the card is a cut down RX 5700, just like we expected. The clocks are around 15% lower, and surprisingly, it is limited to 6GB of GDDR6, no 8GB models in sight. It's a pretty odd choice, since the 5500 XT does come in an 8GB variant too, but I understand it since it needs some way to make a difference. Price-wise, the RX 5600 XT will be 280 US dollars, and it will release on January 21st. Personally, if it was in the market and I had a max budget of $300, I'd go for the 5600 XT and overclock the hell out of it. So far, Navi has proven that it can gain some ground when it's overclocked into space heater mode. Only real issue I have here is why the hell did they compare it to the GTX 1060? That thing is old, and the 16 series and even the supers have been out for a while. Are they starting to use some Intel tactics on us? In the CPU department, the company revealed that the 3990X will cost you $3,990. That's, that's cute, AMD. Specs wise, here they are on screen, and the uh, chip will be available on the 7th of next month. AMD is really trying to keep up with the uh, whole 7th thing, huh? Also for CPUs, the mobile chips have been revealed. The Zen 2 with Vega graphics based lineup has a whole lot of cores and a whole lot of threads too. I was surprised to see that the chip was monolithic instead of uh, being chiplet based, but I guess converting Vega to a chiplet system was not necessarily worth the trouble for AMD. This generation of mobile APUs mark AMD's pretty much complete control in the performance segment for the mid to high end laptop chips. Both the 15 and 45 watt chips have been compared to the proper Intel CPUs to mark their dominance. Sure, the 45 watt was pitted against a Gen 9 CPU, but all Intel did to their chips for the 10th gen is a little bit of an overclock. One interesting feature they talked about is called Smart Shift. It essentially shifts power to the most demanding chips between the CPU and an RX based GPU during a task. It's pretty cool. Moving on, let's talk cases, shall we? An unexpected MSI has come in to reveal two new ones. MSI has not manufactured many cases, and I don't really like them either, but I do think I respect these ones a little more. The Mag Forge looks like it's got good airflow, but it has those really dated thumb screws for the tempered glass. The other one is called the Creator, and it looks like a silence-focused build with some cotton-lined panels for soundproofing. Keep in mind, I said I respect those cases, I don't really think that they look that good. For Cooler Master, we got four new cases. First is the Masterbox TD500. What's up with 500 on all the freaking cases? Anyways, it looks like a Meshify C with a little more angles. This one is $89 US. Then there's the Masterbox NR600P, which is basically a massive case capable of taking up to SSI EED or EATX form factor boards. And it really doesn't need or want to be pretty. 
This one is $130 US. Next is the Masterbox MB311L, which looks like a tiny H500 with a full mesh. It's quite nice actually, and you can also buy a suffocated version with plastic instead of mesh. These two models run at $40 a pop. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the CES coverage of day one. If you got any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. So let me know down below, what was your favorite thing about CES, the first day of CES? Take care.